Miss Sanders, hey. How are you guys? Got in. <laughs> Miss Ronnie Norma's bless. Good morning, Miss Don Nicole Stip. Hey Kirsten. Hey guys, Sierra LaDonna, Creativity J, I think I caught that. Divine. Hey y'all from Washington, DC. Miss Camille. Awesome. Chosen Queen. How are you? Hey y'all. Missed you yesterday. I, I I didn't come on yesterday actually. I was um tending to my Hey Madeline, how's it going? Is it freezing for you all? Hey Star. Um I didn't come on because I had to take care of my daughter who's who was trying to get me under the weather. Um is it freezing for a lot of you all or just a couple? Love you too, real Kiki. I want to make sure that uh, if I'm freezing, that I maybe drive around and and uh, okay, it's freezing a little bit. Let me see if I can get a different location really, really quick. All right, uh, it's freezing out here. It's freezing. Okay, let me let me move for a minute and uh, see if that works a little bit. And um, y'all can let me know if sometime, depending on where I'm parked at, it'll freeze a little bit. Not frozen, okay. Well, I'm driving right now, so I got to find another parking space. So, all right. Okay. All right, I just moved. So let me know if this is not frozen, not frozen. Okay, let me, all right. All right, so guys, uh, it's good now. Okay, this is a good location then. So I just came to my car after having a workout and I just jotted down, <laughs> took a chase receipt and jotted down a few things that I wanna go over really quickly. Um, and then I'll give you chances to ask a few questions. Thanks so much. Um, so this is 2016, y'all. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking around at people. You know, we just had the holidays. I'm sure a few people ate real good. Still on the MCT or awesome. And um, I, I know that that some of you all are uh, have probably eaten eaten your way into maybe a few pounds over the holidays. So um, it's time to get some detox in for 2016. And uh, I'm gonna t tell you just briefly how to do that, and in a way that's not too um, complicated. Um, and again, if I get frozen or whatever, just kind of let me know. Uh, but definitely, you guys have to detox. And what I want you to know is, listen, I want you um, at some point today to get whatever the biggest mirror you got in your house, the biggest mirror you have, a full body if you can get that, a full body mirror. And I want you to get butt naked and I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. I'm serious because sometimes people don't do this. And I want you to be honest about what you think about your body and your size. Absolutely. I want everybody to do it. I want you to look at your stomach, turn sideways, just look at your, your thighs and, and all of that. And uh, I want you... my. <laughs> And I want you to be honest with yourself and say, is this how I want to look for the rest of the year, for the rest of my life, or don't hide your eyes, Tracy, or, <laughs> or yes, homework, or do you want to make some changes about how you look, even how you feel? Just look at yourself for a moment, just stand there for a couple of minutes, look at your belly, look at your legs. Look at, you know, figure out how you feel, your energy level, all of that. And if you if you feel like I want to look different, this is not how I want to look. I need to lose weight. I need to put my belt, get my belly down or whatever. Then you got to do something about it. You cannot if you if you want to look different, um, if you want to feel different. Um, OK, sorry, uh, 1000. Let me know if anybody else if, if it's frozen. If you want to look different, feel different, you cannot keep doing the same stuff. People are literally walking around. I just kind of look at people when they're eating and, you know, and people are literally walking around like zombies. Like they have no clue how sick they're going to wind up getting. They have no clue how much sugar is going in their system. 
people are doing, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 uh, grams of carbs a day um, and think that they're not going to get sick or catch diabetes. And, and it's not even a question. Your body cannot handle all of the sugar that you put in it. Um, so if you really think that you're going to, you know, reach a certain age and just be healthy the rest of your life and you keep eating the same way, or you think your body is going to come down and listen really quickly. I know a lot of people are like, Oh, but this person is skinny or that person is skinny, you know, and we, I have to work just as hard, you know, to, to, to work out. And I have to have just as much sacrifice. I've been through a lot physically with my body. I've had three kids. I've had uh, four epidurals. I've had open stomach surgery. Um, and I and and trust me, you know, even working out while I was pregnant was not easy. I am not superwoman. I'm really not. I just built my endurance. After my third child, I was in the workout room uh, two and a half hours a day. Um, getting my stomach down. I couldn't even lift weights at the time. I had to do a lot of cardio because I looked at my stomach after I had a baby and I said, I am not going to keep this stomach. So I was working out four or five days a week, two and a half hours each time I went to the gym. I was pushing it. And mind you, after I had my third child, I also had to have open stomach surgery about six months later. And I got cut when I had my child this last round. So there were some challenges that I had to conquer um, also for my body. Okay. Um, so this is not about people get basically what they deserve when it comes um, to their health and their body and, and things like that. People get what they deserve. Um, if someone has a nice body who's fit and things like that, they probably deserve it. Um, just because how old is my youngest? My youngest is two. So I have a two year old. Um, she turned two at the end of the, uh, last year and, um, she, and then I have a, um, one who just turned six, uh, in, on Christmas Eve. And then I have another one who's, um, eight. Uh, but I'm, I'm not superwoman, <laughs> Maddie. <laughs> I'm not, I just, I've worked very, very hard and diligently, um, just to get my body to that position. And I was not going to let the excuse of having kids make me look um, how I didn't want to look. So I had to work really, really hard. After after three kids, you got to pick up the pace. So I'm I'm just saying that to say I am disciplined, but it took a lot. You think I didn't want to go home and go to bed? You know, after when I was eight months, nine months pregnant, going to the gym, trying to keep in shape. Of course I did. Um, some days I wake up this morning, I woke up, I'm not feeling the, the best. My, my daughter was laying on me yesterday and coughing and hacking and stuff on me. Um, I want to go back to bed, but I didn't. I got up and I, and I did what I had to do. Um, so you're going to get out what you put in. It's just as simple as that. You get out what you put in. Um, so in 2016, first of all, I have different routines. I go to different gyms. I challenge my body in different ways because sometimes you reach a, um, a, a, like you reach that glass ceiling. Um, so I had to start doing other stuff like stair climbing and stair master and uh, sp a spin class. I still lift weights. I'm always lift weights because lifting weights is good for you. Um, how much cardio for weight loss? It'll be a, um, a combination between cardio, weightlifting, and, and diet. You can actually lose weight from diet much quicker than you can from losing weight. I mean, from working out. Um, so, um, you know, it's a challenge. I had to challenge my body, do some different stuff. I joined another gym called Orange Theory Fitness where they push you um, to different levels. So, look, it's not easy for anybody, okay? I work very, very hard. If you see me in the gym... Um, I'm working very, very hard. You know, I'm not like, it, it's it's challenging. I'm running and, you know, doing what I need to do. Absolutely. Wife, ministry, kids, trying to do business. It's it's a lot, but you still have to discipline yourself. So if you want, it depends on what you want. What do you want? What do you want? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to look good? You want your stomach to come down? You got to put in the work. So, um, and, and I'm, the sugar detox that part is not even about putting in work. This part is about the fact that if you don't do this, I promise you, you're going to be sick. 
you're going to wind up with diabetes. With the way the food industry is going and how bad there are scientists that creates the food to make you addicted to it. They actually go into laboratories and put certain stuff in the food to make sure that you are addicted and that you cannot um, stop eating it. So you have to do a sugar detox. You have to come away um, from some of this food because honestly, sugar makes you more hungry. The problem is not ever overeating. I know y'all probably think that. The problem is not overeating. The problem is being overweight. When you're overweight, you overeat because your fat cells are increased and they really are like monsters and they want to eat and eat and eat. So if somebody is overweight, they're going to eat more because their fat cells are increased. You can change the science of your body. When you lose weight and your stomach goes down, you will not eat as much. Your fat cells, they're like monsters. And what they do is they suck all the fuel out your blood and then they uh, slow your metabolism down and then they cause you not to be able to burn fat. Um, sugar in and of itself hijacks your brain, hijacks your taste buds, and it hijacks your metabolism. So if you don't come off the sugar, you're not going to feel good and you're not going to be able to lose weight and you're going to wind up having an insulin problem eventually because the more insulin that's, uh, that's secreted out of the pancreas, um, the more chances you're going to wind up with some kind of diabetes and it also increases cancer when you have too much insulin and just to really briefly because i know a lot of people don't even understand about what happens with insulin in the pancreas and the liver is when you're eating all that sugar what happens is the pancreas i always say this shoots out the insulin to scoop up the uh the blood out of your am i freezing some people say i'm freezing um if i am i can move to a lo another location uh i can i can uh okay i got a couple people who say i'm freezing can fruits be consumed during a sugar detox um it depend on what kind of it, it depend on what kind of detox you're doing if you're doing like a um i'm i'm moving to another location because i got a couple of people say it keeps freezing um, it depends. I'm going to go through a couple of different things. No, I'm good. But some people say I'm freezing. So, um, it's, hold on, let me move around. Um, it depends on what kind of sugar detox you're doing. Uh, there are some that I think you should go cold turkey, especially if you are, um, especially if you are trying to lose weight and you may have especially diabetes and i'm gonna tell you what your diet should look like if you do have high blood sugar or diabetes um because you really shouldn't be on a you shouldn't really be eating as much carbs i just moved so let me know if you guys um if i'm freezing up right here um let me know if i'm good um so the insulin shoots out the body okay good morning is that long hey long um, the 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 blood sh uh, the insulin shoots out, scoops the blood up, stores it into the fat, and it gets stored as fat. And it's not as easy coming out of the fat as it is going into the fat. Um, a lot of times it comes around the the belly area because that's the most accessible place. And then what happens is you have lows and highs because what happens you get a sugar drop and then it makes you hungry again. And I always say this is why when you go to barbecues, people can sit up and drink pops all day one after the other after the other after the other if you find yourself eating sweets or cakes or donuts you're going to be hungry because it makes you have a sugar drop and it makes your brain feel like you're hungry again i suggest everybody go on a 10-day sugar detox and the reason why <laughs> dr matthew you crazy uh deception you're gonna go on one too man of god I suggest everybody do a sugar detox because really, especially a 10 day detox, it doesn't, it's not going to like completely solve the problem, but yeah, that's why you're hungry 24 seven. If you eat a lot of sweets, you're always going to be hungry because that insulin is going to take the sugar out of you. Your sugar is used as fuel. And if your sugar drops, then now you're going to be like, oh, I'm so hungry. And then you're going to be irritable. That's why when you wake up and drink coffee and sugar and stuff, you get irritable after a couple of hours. But it takes about 10 days um, for people to feel normal and people to feel good. Insulin spikes is what it is. It takes 10 days. I'm going to tell some of y'all, some of y'all don't even know that y'all don't feel good because you ain't never felt good. Some of y'all don't know that y'all feel bad. When you do a sugar detox, 
when you get to like day six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're going to feel a way that you have never felt before. Um, now it's going, it's a struggle getting to that point because of your body detoxifying itself. But when you get to day 10, you're going to say, wow, I didn't even know I was this tired because now I have uh, energy or I didn't know so much inflammation because it's going to get in rid of the inflammation in your body. It's going to get rid of even biological addictions. Your addictions play a major role in the way you feel and how healthy you feel. And I know sometimes uh, people don't really know that they're not feeling well until they feel well. And then they're going to know the difference. So after about 10 days, you're going to feel a way that you've never felt before if you are addicted to sugar. Yeah, you can drink all kind of natural teas um, and even put stevia, a little bit of stevia in there. <laughs> this is the last day. If you don't get off my periscope. <laughs> um, but you're going to, you know, and, and also, also, you're going to suffer a little bit too if you come off a sugar detox. Just the same way someone would suffer if they were coming off of heroin or cocaine because that is what sh how bad sugar is. It's as, as addictive as like heroin. Um, so maybe at about two, day two, three, no more than four days, you will feel probably a little, if your mind and your body is detoxifying, you're going to feel irritable. You're going to have itchy skin. Possibly you may be nauseous. You may have trouble sleeping. You may be constipated. Um, there's going to be a lot of different things going on with your body, but that means that your body is getting rid of all the toxins and your body is ridding itself of all the inflammation and, and you're detoxifying. And it's the same symptoms anybody would have if they was coming off of any addiction. It, it's, it can be hard, you know, but after about day four, um, after, and you might ha have headaches, there's things you can do for that, like take vitamin B supplements, probiotics that helps because, uh, um, sugar feeds off of bacteria and probiotics help to get rid of bad yeast, um, and, and ba bad bacteria. Um, so there's some things you can do to kind of help out with that, hydrate yourself, even exercise, um, in the morning for extra energy, take some magnesium before you go to bed at night. If you can't, if you have trouble sleeping, um, but I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. You got to, number one, you got to come off the sugar and the grains. You got to come off the sugar and the grains. Freezing again. What is wrong with this? Okay. Let me move again. This location is, is, is like crazy. I am moving. Thank you so much for letting me know. I'm going all around the parking lot. Um, you have to come off the sugar and grains and I will tell you what you can do to replace that. Let me know if I'm freezing. I moved again. I can move again if I need to. Um, still frozen. Still frozen. It's freezing really bad. Okay. Let me move up. I will, uh, fruit, maybe like one fruit a day, but not really a lot of fruit. Let me know if it's freezing now. I'm coming away from where I was. I'm willing to try. Great, great, great. Is it freezing now, guys? Let me know. Okay. Is it freezing? Uh-oh. Okay. No, it's not freezing? Okay. Um. Yeah, you got to come off the grains because you got to come off carbohydrates because carbohydrates... Listen, you know, especially if you have high blood sugar or if you are a diabetic, you do not need to be on a high carb diet. If you are on medication for diabetes, your medication is making your blood sugar low. However, your carbs is going to make your blood sugar back high again. And the diabetes industry, that, that is, that's what they want. They want you to stay connected to the medicine. Everybody can cure themselves of diabetes. Thank you so much. I'm not freezing. Cool. Um, let me know if I do again. I'll move. Everybody can cure themselves for the most part. Most people can cure themselves and even come off the medicine. If you're taking medicine, but you're still eating the same, you're not going to change anything about it. Um, you're still going to have problems and it's going to get worse and worse because the problem is still there. The medication is just trying to suppress and keep the blood sugar low, but your body is still overworking itself and you're going, you need candy. You ain't going to get no candy. Ain't no candy. I'm throwing away everything in the house. 
and, and you're still going to wind up sick. You might wind up even with worse and worse situations. People get their legs amputated. Infections happen. Things get worse and worse as time go on. Um, let me know if I'm freezing because my, my thing is looking a little weird right now. Um, but, you know, I want to encourage you. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit. I feel like I'm freezing. Give me a minute because I can't see anything. But you got to let me know if I am or, or, or not. Okay. I'm not. Okay. Am I freezing? Because I couldn't see nothing on my screen. This is such a bad location. I won't, I won't, uh, I won't do it here anymore. Um, so, um, here's what you're going to do. Um, number one, you're going to increase your protein. Okay. And I'm talking about lean protein, grass fed protein. I'm talking about your eggs your uh your nuts um you know turkey grass-fed turkey um even a little grass-fed beef if you if you do eat beef um what else uh anything that's protein whey protein powder and you will not do intermittent fasting do not do intermittent fasting if you're doing a sugar detox don't wait until you know two o'clock to eat because when you're hungry you're going to compromise a little bit more um you don't want to do um uh in the next 10 days you don't want to do the most cardio i mean you can do cardio but cardio does make you crave carbs so you want to try to do a little bit more weight lifting if you can during um the 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 sugar detox yes you have to increase protein there's only two three kinds of foods really protein fats and carbs you only have three different kind of foods the carbs are really the fats do not go on a low fat diet you don't need a low fat diet if you're a diabetic you need more fat fat is okay especially um when you um you know add um sugar substitutes um with it um, you need a high fat, you don't, your body don't really even need carbs. If you are fasting, are you talking about an absolute fast or are you talking about, um, like a vegetable fast? Because if you're doing a vegetable fast or a Daniel fast, then you're not going to be eating sugar anyway. So that's fine too. Um, avocados are good for fat, cheese, yogurt. And I'm talking about don't do low fat because when you do low fat, then they increase the carbs in whatever the food is. So when you're doing skim milk and stuff like that, then there's going to be more sugar in that. Um, a Daniel fast is fine because you're not going to be, it is a detox. You're not going to be eating sugar on a Daniel's fast. No bread, um, coconut oil, olive oil, avocado, um, healthy fats like fatty fish. Like fatty, fatty fish is really good. Salmon is good. Um, seeds, any kind of oil, coconut oil, real butter. Not, I can't believe it's not butter, real butter. Um, so you're going to increase your protein. You're going to, no popcorn, that's carbs. Um, you're going to increase your protein. You're going to increase your fats. And then you're going to increase your fiber. Um, raw honey is good. It's a good substitute. Yes, um, you can put some of that in your tea. Um, just put a little honey in your tea, but remember you're doing a sugar detox, so you don't want to do a lot of sugar, but you can put some raw hun um, honey in your tea. Make sure it's organic honey, um, by the way. It's still freezing. Let me know if anybody else is freezing, because I don't know if that's some people. No popcorn. Popcorn is carbs. Popcorn is carbs. It turns to sugar. Um, so you want to make sure that you are, um, increase, you know, for breakfast, the best protein is eggs. The best thing to eat in the morning is protein and fats, actually. Um, so you want to do some um, eggs with maybe coconut oil or some eggs with avocado or eggs with real butter. Um, actually, protein is the number one way. Protein for breakfast is the number one way to lose weight. Um, they've done studies. Um, do not ever eat carbs in the morning. It's not good for you. Raw, unrefined, organic honey is good. No popcorn. Um, eggs and bacon, turkey bacon, lean meat, if you um, are doing like, um, you know, meat in the morning. Um, yeah, you can use um, salt, a little salt, but just, you know, you should never overdo anything. I'm a juice, a steak. <laughs> You can eat a steak, but you know, you want to stevia is okay in small, small um, amounts. Um, so vegan pancakes, um, you, they're probably going to substitute it with something that has carbs. So you just want to stick to protein. 
Um, and I actually just, when I came in here, like I said, I wrote down a list. So when you, um, so I put down proteins, for example, the whey protein, uh, eggs, fish, nuts, um, turkey, chicken, grass fed chicken, uh, for fats, um, I wrote down seeds, avocado, eggs, oils, nuts, fatty fish, yogurt, and cheese. Um, no oatmeal. Oatmeal is carbs. It's a grain. Egg whites are fine, but the yolk is very good unless you are um, a diabetic. Um, don't eat a lot of yolks if you're diabetic, but you want to eat the yolks if you're not a diabetic. Um, and then fiber, you got seeds like flaxseed, chia seeds, um, nuts and vegetables. You got to increase your vegetable intake because you want more potassium. The reason why you have cravings is because you are low on potassium. Um, when you get more potassium while wow, I eat oatmeal every morning, like that's really not a good thing to eat in the morning at all. Um, especially I hope you're not doing like the packets where the sugar is in there, but no, you shouldn't eat oatmeal for our uh, breakfast. You should eat protein for breakfast, especially if you're trying to lose weight, protein and healthy fats, protein powder, whey protein, uh, pea protein, which is veggie, uh, vegetable based. Stay away from corn and vegetable oil. Corn is a grain, no corn. Um, why is your, he always scope uh, when he gets out the gym. Um, protein shakes are really good. Um, so uh, you again, if you want to become healthy, if you want to come off the sugar addictions, then you have to do a sugar fast. You are not going to survive a being addicted to sugar. You're going to get sick. One out of like every two people are expected by the time they turn 50 years old at this day and age to have diabetes. Why? Because the food industry is so bad. There's so much sugar in everything. Um... Uh, advice for breastfeeding moms is you have to eat healthy because your child is going to eat the nutrition that you have. So if you're new, um, if you malnutrition, then your baby's going to be uh, malnutrition. No corn because corn is a carb. But listen, if you increase your protein and your fats and your fiber, you're not going to be as hungry. You you're listen, it's going to affect you maybe the first few days. But once you get finished with those first few days, you are not going to feel the impact of it. Trust me, salad dressing, you want to do something like olive oil with a little bit of maybe sea salt or something and maybe some vinegar. Um, it tastes really good. Um, so you can do that for salad dressing. Don't use the salad dressing that got all the sugar in it. Um, when you do come off the sugar fast, don't use low fat stuff. You need your fat. Good. I'm so happy you started the Dr. McCola, um probiotics you need fats fat don't make you fat let me say that again fats don't make you fat not the healthy fats okay what makes you fat is sugar and carbs that makes you fat those are your fat diets don't do low fat stuff because you're compromising with the carbs and the sugar when they do low fat they add the sugar to it don't do low fat nothing you need your fats okay healthy fats omega-3 omega-6 people have been scared away from fats you need fats fats don't make you fat they don't um, I, I love, you know, I love tilapia, cod, but you know, your best fish is going to be like Alaskan, um, salmon, organic salmon is always going to be your best fish, but you don't want to overdo it because of the mercury. Um, so you just want to kind of mix up your protein with different fishes like tilapia and, and, you know, do some chicken and turkey grass fed, um, eggs, you know, so um, omega-3 is a must. I take krill oil um, personally because I think it's a little bit healthier as far as um, the fat is concerned. Almond butter is a good fat. Almond butter is really good. Balsamic vinaigrette is okay um, as long as it doesn't have um, much sugar in it. Um, catfish is not the healthiest fish at the top of the chain, but if you're a catfish person, that's fine, but it's not the healthiest. Um, you don't eat meat or fish, then you're gonna do. You're gonna really increase your fats, fibers, and you know beans and things like that. Uh, fish oil supplements is good. I personally like krill oil, K R I L L O I L. I like coconut oil and I like MCT oil. They have no weight on the liver. Okay, so um, they're healthy for the liver. Krill oil is what I do. 
Okay, so um, I, I definitely want you guys to uh, discriminate between what you're going to eat. Listen, if you keep eating the same way, you're going to keep feeling the same way. You're going to wind up sick. I'm telling you now. You may not be sick today, but five years from now, you will wind up sick if you keep eating the same way. You got to detox your body of this crap that you're eating. I personally like shrimp because it does have a little bit of iodine in it, but you got some people that don't like eating shrimp because of, but you can eat organic shrimp because of, you know, um, the kind of meat that it is. Um, but I really eat it for the iodine, to be honest. Coconut oil is amazing. It's got many nutrients in it. Um, it, ha it has MCT oil in it. It has so many benefits for your body. Increased lean protein, fiber, and fats. Um, almond milk is fine too. You just don't want to do as much sugar. But to be honest, any pasteurized milk is not good. I talked about that in one of my scopes um, as far as unrefined. Or uh, what's some good whey protein? It just depends. There are so many different brands out there for whey protein. Um, I like the, I think it's like called Hydrolyze or something where it um, automatically breaks down in your body real good. Bragg's apple cider vinegar is something that you definitely need to take every morning. And I'll um, scope about what, what, what the real benefits of um, um, apple cider vinegar is. But it's got a million and one benefits. It is a no-brainer. You should take some every morning. It's extremely one of the most healthiest things. It's got good bacteria in it. It's amazing. Uh, greetings from Pakistan. How are you? Uh, coconut oil. Um, just do um, as long as it says organic coconut oil. You'll you're fine. Uh, how much mag? How does magnesium and zinc help? Zinc is help helps with immune boosting. I take zinc every single day. I take magnesium every single day because magnesium is good for your muscles. It's good for your brain. It's a brain food. Um, it relaxes you. Um, it helps um, with your overall health. Actually, magnesium is what the doctors pump into your body when you come into uh, the uh, ER room and your heart stops. They will, and they don't know what to do, and they don't know what happened. They will pump a bunch of magnesium um, in you. Um, so uh, magnesium is good just for your overall health. Selenium is good for you because you need your multi minerals. Period. I take magnesium every day. Uh, I can do a scope on non-GMO, but you want most of your foods to be non-GMO because you don't want anything genetically mo modified. Um, so uh, I need to do good protein while on a da Daniel's fast. On a Daniel's fast, they don't eat meat on a Daniel's fast. Um, are you talking about protein supplements? Um, or I, I always go with whey protein and, and pea protein, the both of those. By the way, I want to interject that I still do owe you guys a relationship scope part two that I never did and I haven't forgot about it. I do low carb, so magnesium helps with leg cramps. Absolutely, if you ever have a leg cramp, you want to take magnesium. Even if you have a headache, you want to take take magnesium. Magnesium helps to relax you. It helps with depression. It helps with brain memory. It helps with um, uh, inflammation. I mean, it helps with a lot of stuff and it just helps with your overall health. Uh, what fruits are good? good uh, fruits with low glycemic index like berries, apples, um, oranges are good. Those that have high glycemic index are, are your bananas. If you have high blood sugar or diabetes, you don't need to have bananas, pineapples, mangoes. Those are very sweet fruits. You want fruits that, that uh, you want fruit. It's really not fruits. It's fruit. You want fruit with low uh, sugar in it. And berries are always at the number one of that. Apples are low. Um, oranges are low. Um, what else? Uh, those are your lowest. Those are your lowest ones. So again, mango, pineapples, bananas, those have high sugars in it. Um, and cherries are low. Cherries are really good, especially to take before you go to bed at night because they actually help you sleep better. Uh, grapes have a lot of sugar. Um, grapefruit is low too. Um, but grapes are good. I like grapes. Grapes have healthy, uh, th grapes are healthy for you. Um, but again, you know, I can't just say that for everybody because again, if you have diabetes or you're concerned about your blood sugar, you really want to stick with fruits that are much lower. Uh, magnesium does help calm you down. Um, kiwi is good. Kiwi doesn't have um, super high um, glycemic index also. Um, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. Um, so... 
um, it's actually not just inflammation, but it's all about your immune system when you have rheumatoid arthritis. So when you have rheumatoid arthritis, um, and a lot of people don't know it's an autoimmune disease, but you have to fix your immune system. Um, so of course that's going to play a role in eating healthy, your vitamins like zinc, um, astragalus, uh, vitamin C, um, turmeric, um, cause turmeric helps with inflammation and obviously with any arthritis, you're going to have inflammation. So turmeric is really good for that. Um, and then apple cider vinegar for immune system, probiotics, eating healthy, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. You got to eat healthy if you have rheumatoid arthritis because sugar causes inflammation and is going to make whatever condition you have worse. Seed and seedless grapes, uh, I don't, I don't know with, with, I mean, I, I don't eat a whole lot of grapes. I eat, um, I eat berries and apples most of the time. So I don't know if there's much of a difference between the seed and seedless. I get seedless because my kids eat it. Um, turmeric and astragalus is really good. Astragalus is supposed to, um, help fight off camp cancerous cells, um, help with, um, uh, boosting antioxidants in your body. Um, what's good for memory? Um, L-carnitine is good for memory and magnesium is good for memory and iodine is also good for memory and I'm forgetting something. I want to tell you something else. Um, oh, MCT oil is good for memory because it's a brain food. Um, so, yeah. So, um, organic honey is good. Raw honey, raw everything. If your diet is mostly raw, you're going to do good. And by the way, if anybody has cancer, you know, you want to talk to your doctor about this, but the best diet for someone who has cancer or who's sick is really a raw diet. You really want to eat raw foods because cooked foods will kill your nutrients. Um, where can I find grass-fed turkey? and chicken i think it will at any health food store you can find grass-fed turkey and chicken walgreens supplements i don't like going to regular stores for supplements because i think some of them are synthetic um i will go to a regular health food store uh, maybe a vitamin shop or your local health food store for vitamins um i don't even like doing a lot of vitamins off of amazon i really like going to you unless you can't find it uh but i like to go to a health food store that um I should have been a medical doctor. <laughs> nah, yeah. Sometime I wish I could have been one too. Um, but I'm not going to school for that right now. Anyway, um, so again, I want you to do your homework, um, which is um to go and look in front of the mirror for anyone who just got on and and tell yourself the truth about your body. Tell yourself look at yourself and be honest and say do I like what I'm looking at can this body improve do I like the way I feel do I like the way my stomach looks do I like the way my thighs look do I like the way my butt look you know um, ask yourself that and and do something about it if the answer is no do something hey in Bahamas yes do something about it you if you if you don't you know change what you're doing and you don't become more disciplined you are going to stay the way you are and you have no excuse to be sad and down and depressed and discouraged about it if you don't change anything different i'm i i feeling bad are you a doctor i'm not a doctor i'm not a medical doctor i've just studied um health herbs and nutrition um for over 15 years but I'm not a medical doctor. And for anybody who has a condition or a disease, do not use my, my information to um, replace your doctor. You do want to see your doctor, but I think you should also see a naturopathic doctor too um, because they get down to roots. And uh, doctors prescribe a lot of medicine that don't cure anything. They just help with symptoms, but they're not going to help with your disease. If you are on metformin or blood pills or insulin, don't think that you can just take the medicine and still do what you're doing your body is still going to break down as a matter of fact the uh, medicine that diabetic patients take cause liver failure kidney failure and all kind of problems um so hey how you doing um nicole um nascent iodine or iodorol i-o-d-e-r-o-l um, so uh, a lot of those pills do have a lot of side effects. They are poisonous. They are toxic. I'm not saying don't come off of I'm not saying come off of them. Just keep using them, but you're going to have to have another strategy for your dietitian portion. And I always like to say that your liver needs to be healthy. 
if you are concerned about high blood sugar um, and, and diabetes because your liver, if you can restore your liver back and do even a liver detox, then you can help solve like 90% uh, of the problem um, with your diabetes because you do have a hormone in your liver called insulin-like hormone that works even harder than the hormone that your pancreas sec um, secretes out. Um, and you can be functioning off of a liver that is 90% damaged and don't know it. If you tell me your diet, I'll tell you how your liver look. And uh, sometimes your liver has to get to functioning like at five six percent sometime for your body to break down but then by that point you are um way in head uh, just way out of the box of even trying to be moderate at that point at that point you got to go extreme come completely off sugar and carbs and it's not fun um having to do a raw diet and things like that um because you can have a fatty liver or liver failure or you know things that start happening um to your liver you can literally right now today be functioning off of like 10 percent of your liver and not know it and then boom at some point maybe in the next year or so because you keep eating how you eating your body can't handle that stuff your body's not meant to break down that stuff your body not even meant to break down uh, uh, gluten the way it does so for people who are eating wheat and wheat bread and not eating gluten-free um, foods um, your body your body's not meant for that so I'm telling you now you can keep doing this to yourself but in five years when your body shuts down you wind up in the hospital with lit liver failure um, diabetes high blood pressure and there's other reasons why people get diabetes other than not eating healthy there are stress things that happen to the body so I'm not I'm, there are always exceptions so I'm not saying everybody who has diabetes especially type 2 there are kids that are born with diabetes type I mean type 1 um, so I'm not saying that um, everybody who has it just, you know, was, um, you know, living a, a reckless life with their eating. But a lot of times it is due to that. Um, so uh, just make sure that if you want something different out of 2016, you want to feel, I, listen, if you do this, you will not regret it. I will, I don't know nobody who winds up eating healthy, feeling healthy, feeling clear in their mind. Sometimes you can't even uh, think right if you're not healthy. You don't have the mental capacity. Your brain will be freed up. Sugar robs the brain of functioning properly. Um, so uh, I don't know anybody who will do this and who will regret it after feeling good about themselves. They're not going to say, I feel so good. I regret this. I wish I was still eating that fried chicken and them cakes and pies and donuts for breakfast because you're going to know the difference. You're going to be like, man, I was sick and didn't even know it. Some people are walking around like zombies. They eating donuts and cakes and fried foods and going to, uh, I, I, I don't even stop at fast food restaurants, you know, and uh, they're eating all of this junk and flour and enrich white flour and all this toxins this stuff is not even real food that y'all eating like twinkies and doritos you should figure out how they even make doritos that stuff is toxic it's not even food it's chemicals it's actually chemicals that you're feeding your body and you can you have to be a fool to think that you can put chemicals in your body and bleach and all this other stuff that they're putting in the foods and all this um addictive mechanisms that they're putting you got to be a fool to think that you're going to keep eating this stuff and you're going to not break down at some point people are dying and they sleep they're having heart attacks and and heart disease and sugar is the number one cause of heart disease if you didn't know it sugar is not pork and beef for people who coming off the pork and beef and think that that's it it's sugar that causes number one cause of heart disease um so you got to treat your body good if you're going to stay for a while you know and um and and be healthy and to me it doesn't matter how much money you have or, or how your relationships look if you're not going to be around here long enough to live through them then and this cancer problem is really bothering me um although people catch can we don't even know the cause of it um of cancer i mean it's demonic but we don't really know um the cause of cancer um and some people are getting it from environmental purposes you know so if you are healthy and you wind up with cancer it could be because of the environment like you you know but what you know you got to do what you know to do um somebody said alcohol alcohol has a lot of sugar in it um, so for people who drink wine and things like that, you got to give your body a break from that stuff because you don't want to overexhaust your liver. 
Um, and that's the problem when it comes with alcohol. It is one of the um, most dangerous substances for your liver. So you, again, moderation, you have to use moderation. Um, you sleep bad. Um, if you eat bad, you may sleep bad. It could be stress. It could be hormones. It could be a lot of things. Um, but I just kind of want you, um, they say red wine is healthy for the heart. Um, so I'm not uh, all or none. I'm not an extremist or anything, but everything is in moderation and everything you have to give your body a break from that stuff. Um, so if you're someone who drinks it every single night, like some people I know, I have a glass of wine every single night. You can't do that every, every single night. You got to come off of it and make Maybe do some kabuchi tea or something else that relaxes your mind. Okay. Um, leave me to the church. Stay away from man-made fruits and vegetables. Absolutely. Stay away from anything that's synthetic or genetically modified, by the way. Um, so I hope um, that this information um, helped. Um, again, if you are on the detox, make sure you take some uh, vitamin B. Make sure you take your probiotics in the morning on an empty stomach. Don't eat anything until about 20 minutes after um, so your body can absorb it. You need probiotics like you need air. Okay, that's how important it is to me. Um, just because you need a healthy gut and a healthy gut, um, an unhealthy gut makes you sick. They actually say blindness. The, the, the reason why blindness, um, happens is because of, it, it's a stomach problem. It's an intestinal problem. Actually, it's not really always an eye problem. Sometimes it's an intestinal problem. Um, so I, I drink essential water. This is the kind of water that I drink. Um, I always, uh, tell people it has 9.5 alkaline. So helps your body um, to detox. Obviously, it does have a little bit of magnesium in it, and it has sodium bicarbonate, which ha happens to help with a lot of things like acid reflux, um, inflammation, and all kind of stuff. Um, so this is a good water. You need an alkaline diet. Dr. Mercola, M-E-R-C-O-L-A, is a good probiotic um, supplement to take. That's the one that I always rec recommend. Um, and it has 70 billion cultures in it, um, which is most, it's like $30, I think, or something, but it's, it's worth it. Um, because even if you refrigerate it, it has almost a hundred thousand cultures. Um, you cannot take, um, any probiotic because they did a study and found out that about 49 of the brands, um, that were used for probiotics didn't even have the good bacteria in it. They were false advertising. So Dr. McCullough's has been proven um, because they are the leading people um, who uh, have even started with the whole putting the strands in the probiotics. Um, so they're um, trustworthy, but you got to make sure that the manufacturer is trustworthy. Dr. McCullough is good. Dr. Sebi, I like Dr. Sebi. I'm actually going to do um, one of his detox this year after I take my pictures because I might lose weight from it. Um, but it, I'm going to do a cellular detox from some of his um, products and um, his uh, diet that he's on. It's a very intense one. Uh, detox smoothies, good or bad? Are you talking about like a product or are you saying like maybe some kale and um, mixed vegetables and things like that? Because that's always going to be good. Meal plans. I, I have I have meal plans in my books. I have a liver, liver detox and a gut detox book that does have meals in it and foods and things like that and um, recipes. Um, so, yeah, make sure to encourage everyone to understand this is not it's not a quick fix, y'all. Thank you. This is not a quick fix. Sometimes it takes your body years to reverse itself from damage. Um, this is not something. So for people who are trying to do a quick fix, a diet and all of this, don't try to rush your body to like lose weight real quick. Don't go on no extreme thing where it's like, I got to drop 20 pounds right away. You need to be doing something realistic that you can keep up with. Because if you can't keep up with it, you're going to go, if you go back to the same way of eating or go back to something different, your body is going to adjust back to what it was doing. You should be losing like one to two pounds a week. Um, with adjusting your eating habits. I hate quick fixes. I hate diets. This is a lifestyle. If you're doing a diet, what you're saying is you're doing something that's so short term just for a temporary fix. That is not good for you. That is not good for your health. And all you can do is look at all the celebrities that go on these diets and go up and down and up and down. You know, this is a lifestyle. If you're trying to be healthy, 
um, then this is not something that's short lived. And if you do a diet, once that goal is done, then you're good. You're done. You don't have no other motivation. As a matter of fact, you might motivate yourself and reward yourself by eating something that you know is unhealthy. Like I done dropped this 20 pounds. I finished this diet. I've been doing it for 20 days, you know, and now I'm about to eat like, and just, you know, and then you'll be back in the same predicament. So get your mind right. Um, get your body right. You'll be, um, thank you so much. Um, fire lioness. Um, so get your mind right, get your body right for 2016. Uh, stop walking around like zombies. Don't let the rest of these people fool you while they sitting up drinking beers and, and eating chicken wings and Buffalo wild wings and McDonald burgers and everybody's just living the fast life. Um, and you know, like zombies don't jump into the hype of that. Sit back, look around. I sometimes just sit back and look around and I'm like, wow, I'm just so grateful. I'm aware of what's happening because uh this person is probably gonna have a heart attack this person probably gonna get diabetes um if they don't change the way they eat and i'm not saying you don't re you know i'm not saying that you know every once in a while you know i go on vacation and i you know eat and you know indulge and it's not a big thing for me because i know what my lifestyle looks like i know what my consistency looks like um so i'm not saying that you gotta you know that you can't uh you know go on vacation and eat good or whatever or even around the holidays i came up with solutions for people to eat what they wanted to as far as intermittent fasting and things like that you know to help out so you know i'm not saying that it's i'm just completely like um but i'm just saying you need some consistency you need to wake up and be aware and i'm trying to make people aware but i'm gonna tell you even you who know what's happening with with the health industry the food industry even you, every, all of y'all not going to get healthy. It's the ones that learn how to adapt to the awareness, you know, because people know, they know mama got diabetes. This person got high blood pressure. This person got this people dying young, people dropping dead. People got this, you know, people know. So some people are aware. However, people are not adapting. So there, it's not enough to make them say, I'm going to change. That's not going to be me. I'm going to feel good. So your adaptability IQ has to change. If you know that this stuff is not good for you, if you know that you wake up with a lack of energy and you lose energy throughout the day and you are addicted to sugar and you can't stay away from eating dessert and carbs make you happy because you and cookies make you happy and pasta and rice and potatoes and, and, and McDonald's make you your eyes big, you know, then you got to adapt if you know this stuff people know some people are just some people are you got you know some people are asleep completely they have no clue then some people are made aware and then you got the ones that do something about it you got the ones that take action the only ones that are going to be healthy are the ones that take action and get become disciplined and you ain't got to wait for your mama and your grandmama to die to realize, oh, I, I'm going down the same pattern. I need to change my my ways and my life, you know. Um, so take action. Be disciplined. Take it one day at a time. Take it one step at a time. You will not become this health freak overnight. It's one day at a time. Go to bed wiser, a little bit wiser about your eating every day one step at a time and watch by 2017 you be a different person you think different your mind is going to be different your body is going to look different you're going to have more confidence you're going to have more courage and you are going to see the results baby steps don't take off like this is a hundred meter dash because it's not just be consistent and go to bed wiser a little bit wiser every day and you're going to see things change for your life. And um, everybody who is healthy deserves to be healthy um, because they're probably putting in a lot of work. And, and while everybody else is indulging and, 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 and feeding their appetites and their desires, they're sitting back saying, nope, I know how to say no to myself. I'm not going to do that. Um, so, nope, the change is not overnight. It's one step at a time just i rather you just be consistent okay i don't want you eating uh going on a crazy you know going on this detox for 10 days and then after the detox like 
I don't want you going on a roller coaster. I'd rather you just be straight across the board. I, I just rather you just be like, yeah, I ate a little bad today, but I'm doing better. I'm drinking more water. I'm eating more fruits. I'm saying no to more stuff. Um, I'd rather you just be steady because if you're at least consistent and steady, then we can pull you up another level and we can pull you up another level and pull you up another level in your consistency. Um, so, um, but I will say try to 10 day detox because you will feel different. And I think I just want to tell y'all that, uh, um, that I, I want you guys to feel a different way so that you can feel the difference. It takes 10 days to feel the difference and that kind of can motivate you because you'll know, wow, I was sick. I was lack of energy. I was, my body was aching. My knees was aching. My back was aching. You know, I needed coffee to get through the day and I want you to kind of experience that for yourself. All right, so uh, I'm done. I've talked a, a, lot, a very long time and um, uh, I'll get the uh, detox stuff out to you. I have the books ready. I just don't have my website together yet and uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to get all of that together. I just have to have the plat the right platform to send out my stuff. Um, so I, I pray that you guys are the ones that take action and not just hear this stuff and just keep eating your donuts. I get people who eat popcorn and stuff while they're listening to me and they stuffing themselves with like candy bars. Like, mm, I sure don't need to listen to what she's saying. Mm, you know, like I get people who really do that. It's so funny, you know. Um, and that's cool. That's cool. You're going to be unhealthy. That's, that's, that's the reality. Let's just live in reality for a moment. You're going to be unhealthy if you keep doing that. Um, I want you guys all to be healthy, to live healthy and to be around for your kids and your grandkids and as much as you can take control. And again, this is no slight to anybody who has cancer or disease because unfortunate things happen to people, um, when they really don't deserve it and they don't know how it happened. Um, I've known health freaks to get cancer and stuff like like that and I know it wasn't because of their eating and it was probably something else you know people have had radiation x-rays you know you just don't know how stuff is affecting you you know so this is no slight to those who have had problems with their heart their you know cancer even diabetes that come on from stress hormones and things like that this is for those who know that they need to change the way they eat all right I'm happy you guys joined me. No popcorn. What? What is this popcorn deal? Like, even though popcorn is not as bad as some of the other stuff, there is gluten-free, non-genetically modified popcorn and things like that, but not during the detox. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'll talk to you guys um, again soon. And I really do. Um, can you throw me a thumbs up if you want me to still do the relationship um, answering question? Because I still haven't done part two for that. And I just want to see if y'all still interested in it um, for relationship talk. Single, married, all of that good stuff. Okay, so y'all still want that. Okay, cool. <laughs> I see a lot of thumbs. So I'll do that. I'll do that. I will do that for you guys. Because um, I know I owe it to you and I haven't forgot. I'm just not as consistent on Periscope as I need to be. So I'll get better in 2016, guys. Yes, but this is better. <laughs> Well, I'll do all of it. I mean, it's okay. I'll do, I'll go back and forth. It's cool. All right. Thank you guys so much. Love you all. And I hope y'all are enjoying um, the beginning of your new year. Let's, let's go out with a bang. I'll be um, updating you and giving you strategies, um, tips and things like that, answering questions as always. And, uh, and I'm going to let you know with my website, I'm telling you, I'm, oh, I'm so 